the Lord has made. We're going to rejoice and be glad in it. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him all creatures here below. Praise him Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. We welcome you into the worship service at Bethel African Methodist Episcopal Church of San Diego. We invite you wherever you may be in your home, on your job, living room, dining room, den, even in your garage. We welcome you into the worship service. Come on and bless the Lord with us right where you are. Praise and worship, take us up higher. Cause he's worthy. He's worthy. Right. 
somebody you might be in a down season right now and it may look like God is not listening to you but he says in your weakness I am made strong and God wants to be put back in the rightful place in your life hallelujah God you're strong when I'm mighty you're strong when I'm weak you're strong when I don't have it you're strong when I don't feel good God I bless you God I praise you God I to praise his holy name. We praise it, his holy name because he's good. He's merciful. He's loving. Thank you. Thank you. Let us bow our hearts. Father God, we've come to praise your name. We thank you. We thank you for all that you've done, Lord. Father God, you've given us another opportunity, Lord, to come to your house to praise you for all that you've done. Father God, you've brought us through another week. 
And Lord, we might take it for granted, but there were a lot of people that didn't make it through this week. So as we were able to wake our eyes up this morning, put our feet down on the floor, and say thank you, because you gave me one more day. Father, your Holy Spirit is already here. And we're just praying, Father, that as we start this worship service, Lord, we know you're in the midst already, but we just want to say thank you. Father God, we still look at the trials and tribulations of this world all the muck and mire, the mess and confusion. But Lord, we are so thankful that you still sit on the throne. We are so thankful that you are still in charge. We are still thankful that you continue to keep your arms of protection around us. We are thankful that you continue to give us health and strength. Father God, there's so many blessings that you continue to bestow upon us, even though we may fall short. But this morning, Lord, I just want to say thank you for being God. We ask you, Father God, that you touch our pastor this morning. Father God, as he brings the preached word, may it prick someone's heart, Lord. Somebody that doesn't know you. Somebody that needs a relationship with you. Somebody that may have lost their way. Oh, Father God, we're just knowing that that word will fall on somebody's heart this morning, Father. Father God, as we celebrate another communion Sunday, a Sunday where it's time for us to take a reevaluation of ourselves, Lord, to look over the past month to see where you have brought us from. And Father, we just thank you because we do this in remembrance of you. We thank you this morning, Father. We're asking for healing power for this nation. We're asking for healing power of our sick and afflicted, Lord. The ones that are in our bulletins this morning, Lord. Father God, we just ask you that your mighty power be in the midst. And we'll be so careful to give you all praise, honor, and glory, Lord, because you are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy of the praise. We can't stop praising you, Lord, because you didn't have to do it. So we just thank you. We praise you. We magnify you. We lift you up because you are worthy of the praise. And when all is said and done, Lord, let us continue to keep your Holy Spirit rest and ruling and abiding in us. All this we ask in the precious, precious of Jesus Christ, your Son, we pray. Let the church say amen, 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 amen. and amen. Thank you. Thank you. There's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place, and I know that it's the spirit of the Lord. There's sweet expressions on each face. Yeah. 
praise. Without a doubt, we know that we have been revived when we shall leave this place. Sweet Holy Spirit, sweet heavenly dove. when we leave this place. I'm feeling it already. Hallelujah. I stand before you a praise report. I am the praise report. God brought me through two surgeries. And as we get a little bit older, it takes our body a little bit longer to recuperate. So I just want to thank everybody for your prayers. Hallelujah. Because they sure enough brought me through. We are at the point in our worship service where we release the word of God into the atmosphere. And I have the privilege of releasing Genesis, the 18th chapter, verses 1 through 11. And it reads, Then the Lord appeared to him by the terebinth trees of Mamre. Mamre is the place of abundance. As he was sitting in the tent, door in the heat of the day and the he in this scripture is Abraham so he lifted his eyes and looked and behold three men were standing by him and when he saw them he ran from the tent door to meet them and bowed himself to the ground and said my lord if I now, if I have now found favor in your sight, do not pass on by your servant. Hallelujah. Please, hallelujah. He said, don't pass on by. Please let a little water be brought and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree. And I will bring a morsel of bread that you may refresh your heart. Hallelujah for the refreshing of our hearts by the water of God's word. After that, you may pass by inasmuch as you have come to your servant. They said, do as you have said. So Abraham hurried into the tent to Sarah and said, quickly, make ready three measures of fine meal. Knead it and make cakes. And Abraham ran to the herd, took a tender and good calf, gave it to a young man, and he hastened to prepare it. So he took butter and milk and the calf which he had prepared and set it before them. And he stood by them under the tree as they ate. Then they said to him, where is Sarah, your wife? So he said, here in the tent. And he said, I will certainly return to you according to the time of life. And behold, Sarah, your wife, shall have a son. 
Sarah was listening in the tent door, which was behind him. Now, Abraham and Sarah were old, well advanced in age, and Sarah had passed the age of childbearing. Read for your hearing, Genesis 18, verses 1 through 11, from the New King James Version of the Word. May you hide the word of the Lord in your heart, that you may not sin against it. Amen. Amen. I just want to say, first of all, this is a living word. Yes. The word of God is not a dead word. It's a living word. In that spirit, I read from the New Testament. I read from the Gospel uh, of Luke, uh, chapter 10, verses 38 through 42. Now, it happened as they went that he entered a certain village, and that person is Jesus bless his name, and a certain woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, who also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word, but Martha was distracted with much serving, and she approached him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Therefore, tell her to help me. And Jesus answered and said to her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and troubled about many things, but one thing is needed. And Mary has chosen that good part, which shall not be taken away from her. Now that is the word of God for the very people of God. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the blessed Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. And amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Praise the Lord, everyone. We're going to continue in our worship through giving. Um, at this time, we're going to ask if you would consider how the Lord has blessed you, not just today, but every day. And how the Lord continues to supply all of our need according to his riches and glory. We certainly want to thank God for all of our members who continue to contribute out of what the Lord blesses you with. We thank you for our soon-to-be members. I know we have some that are not yet of this fold. And then we also thank those that are viewing the worship service and have been compelled to share in the tithe or offering. My brothers and sisters... Giving is certainly a part of worship, and we need your help to continue the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ in San Diego and abroad. We have four different ways in which you can give. Of course, the first way in which you can give is by going to your cell phones. Go to Givelify. It's on your phone. If you don't have it, you can download the app. It's Givelify. Download the app to your cell phone. Go to Bethel, African Methodist Episcopal Church of San Diego, and click give. You can choose how you want to give and where you want it to go. The second way, or you can also download the Givelify app onto your computer, laptop, or desktop. The next way that you can give is by going to our church website, Bethel AME, SD, Sam David, dot com. Go to the donate button and click on give, and you can give that way. For our um, Members, you can always drop your tithe offering off at the church. And those of you who are viewing our worship service, you can, if you want to mail in a tithe offering, mail it in to Bethel AME Church, 3085 K Street, San Diego, California, 92102. Lord, we pray that you will bless both the gift and the givers, that they all may be used for the uplifting of your kingdom. For our members, remember that we are preparing for our annual conference. We have an assessment that we have to remit. If you have not rendered your conference claim assessment, for those that are members of this great church, please remember to do so at this time so that we can make our commitment. Praise and worship. Give us some giving music, please, as we prepare our offering.
come of thee, O Lord, and of thine own have we given thee. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. communion we have what's called the general confession where we come together to confess which means to admit to God that what you thought or did was wrong so those who are watching and those who are present let us bow our heads in our general confession to our almighty God almighty God father of our Lord Jesus Christ maker of all things judge of all persons we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter 
serve and please thee in newness of life to the honor and glory of thy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. And the people said together, Amen. Amen. Praise God.
Come on, let the church say amen. Right there in your home, on your job, in your living room, in your dining room. I don't know about you this morning, but I'm glad that we serve a risen Savior a living Savior, and a live Savior. And even when the enemy thought that he had him, the God we serve is so big, so bad, so bold, that even the grave couldn't hold him. And the account that I have said that he was so cool when he got up. You thought President Obama was cool when he walked. Jesus got up after the third day. He didn't get up in a hurry, but he got up so cool, calm, and collected, he even folded up his grave clothes, neatly left them, so everybody would know that death couldn't hold me down. And so, my brothers and sisters, the praise and worship team has inspired us and reminded us that the God we serve is alive. We serve a risen Savior. And so, whatever you're going through today, you may need it to hear, have needed to hear this song sung to you. Prayers prayed, scriptures read is a reminder that not even death can hold him down. So whatever you're experiencing today, I know that we're still in a pandemic. I realize that racism, systematic racism is rearing its ugly head. But the God we serve is alive and well. He sits high and looks low. And with everything that's going on, he's going to bring us through more than conquerors. Thank you, praise and worship, for blessing us on this day. Will you go with me this morning to the Lord in prayer? Father God, in the name that is above every name, the name of Jesus. We come before your presence today thanking you for another opportunity to stand, to stand and proclaim what thus saith the Lord. Through many dangers, toils, and snares, we have already come, and we give you praise, honor, and glory. We thank you for 
magnificent musicians that play to the glory and honor of your name. We thank you for this praise and worship team, Father God, that are praising and worshiping you and helping us to praise and worship you in spirit and in truth. We thank you for the clergy that have assembled here today to lift up prayers to your ears and to read scripture for our edification. And now, Father God, it's time for the word to be preached. And I truly understand that without your spirit, it's impossible. So, Lord, my mouth, take my words, and let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, save someone, and send someone into the body of Christ. Lord, we won't take the credit for what you do. We'll give you all the praise on it, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Holy Spirit, I know you're in the house, but go to every household is hearing and watching this worship service. Bless the word and the worship. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Praise God for another day. This is the day that the Lord has made, and I want to rejoice and be glad in it. I want to say happy anniversary to my, my beautiful bride, Deirdre Monique Kirkland Vaughn. Who on our first, the first time that I had an opportunity to go out and have a conversation with this sister. It might sound crazy, but I knew she was going to be my wife. And I told her, you and I would be great together. And she probably thought I was crazy. <laughs> who is this man? All these preachers come try to talk to me. You don't know who I am. We would be great together. But the truth be told, the Lord has blessed us. And uh, we've actually been together for 10 years. And it's a blessing. And I thank God for my bride who is a gift from God. The Bible says, he that findeth the wife findeth the good thing. And I found my good thing, and I'm glad about it. Thank you, Lord. This morning, brothers and sisters, I have a word from the Lord that's an encouraging word. I think we need a word of encouragement with all that is happening. And I would be remiss if I did not say that um, to a giant, that was in our midst. It was called from labor to reward to the Honorable John Lewis. Uh, many of you have uh, seen the homegoing celebration and some of the festivities that were held in our country throughout the week to honor this great man of God. So prayerfully, if you don't know much about him, you'll read something about his life and be inspired to go get into some good trouble. So this morning, my brothers and sisters, I want to call your attention to Matthew chapter 14, and I'm going to read for your hearing, verses 13 through 21. Matthew chapter 14, verses 13 through 21. I'm reading from the New King James Version. Hear the word of the Lord. When Jesus heard it, he departed from there by boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the multitudes heard it, they followed him on foot from the cities. And when Jesus went out, he saw a great multitude, and he was moved with compassion for them, and he healed their sick. When it was evening, his disciples came to him, saying, This is a deserted place, and the hour is already late. Send the multitudes away that they may go into the village and buy themselves food. But Jesus said to them, They do not need to go away. You give them something to eat. And they said to him, We have only five loaves and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. 
And he commanded the multitudes to sit down on the grass. And he took the five loaves and the two fish. And looking up to heaven, he blessed and broke and gave the loaves to the disciples. And the disciples gave to the multitudes. So they all ate and were filled. And they took up twelve baskets full of the fragments that remained. Now those who had eaten were about 5,000 men, besides women and children. The message for this morning is he can handle it. He can handle it. The message for the morning on this first Sunday in August is he can handle it. This passage of scripture records one of many miracles that Jesus performed while he was here among us. For some three years, he went about healing people. He went about preaching to people. He just went about doing good things. He preached in the synagogue but he also preached on the street. He talked to those who were Jewish, but he also talked to non-Jews. He went where church folk gathered, and he went where unchurched folk gathered. And that should be a lesson, a lesson to every believer. I know some people get caught up on the scripture that says, come out from among them. But we don't get saved just to stay with the saved. We're saved so that we can become fishermen of men. Salvation is the beginning of the walk. Sanctification is a lifetime. And so in this morning's scripture, we find the Lord in verse 13. It says, when Jesus heard it, what was it that he heard? It caused him to depart from there, get in a boat, and go to a deserted place by himself. What had he heard that caused him to steal away and have a little talk with his father, tell him what was on his mind and in his heart? Well, he heard that his cousin had been murdered. If you read the passages of Scripture leading up to this 13th verse, John the Baptist, the forerunner of Jesus, Elizabeth's son, the one who was in the wilderness baptizing, saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. His head had been severed from his body because the king at that time was in an incestuous relationship with his brother's wife, Herod the Tetrarch. Not the first Herod. Herod's father had slaughtered several boy children that were born around the time Jesus was born. He wanted to murder Jesus because he heard that a king was born and he sent a decree out that any boy children born around the time Jesus was born, was to be slaughtered. So Mary and Joseph took Jesus to Egypt for a season. And after Herod, the father died, they came back and they went to Nazareth. As Jesus started his public ministry, his son, Herod the Tetrarch, is now the ruler. And he had entered into a relationship with his sister-in-law, John the Baptist being a prophet and a proclaimer of the word stood up and spoke truth to power and he told him that you do not have the right to take your brother's wife. And Herod despised John the Baptist but he still would not leave the woman alone. So the woman devised a plan. He had a birthday coming up. My birthday is today. And they had this woman 
that was his woman's daughter. The mother said, I'm going to get him intoxicated, and I want you to dance for him in a seductive manner. And when he asks you what you want, I want you to tell him to give you the head of John the Baptist on a platter. For those of us who are in leadership positions, be careful what you say. Your word is your bond. And as this young woman danced provocatively before the king and got him aroused, he decided he would give her whatever she asked for. He didn't realize that she had been instructed by her mother to request the head of God's prophet. And that's exactly what the young lady requested. And the king, although he was sorry that he said he would give her whatever he wanted, he complied and brought the head of John the Baptist to the young lady. Prior to this happening, as John was in prison, he sent a message to Jesus by his own disciples asking the question, are you the one or do we need to look for another? This is the same John who went Mary, the mother of Jesus, went to Elizabeth, who was John's mother and Mary's cousin, to tell her about the miraculous pregnancy. As soon as John the Baptist's mother opened the door, the baby in her womb leaped. The child leapt in the womb because the, the Savior was near. Filled with the Holy Spirit, even in the womb, he leapt. As he was baptizing out in the wilderness, saying, repent and make your way straight. People would come out from the cities to repent of their sins and be baptized. And they even asked him, are you the Messiah? John said, I'm not the Messiah and the one who's coming. I'm not even worthy to unlatch his shoelaces. One day, as our Lord and Savior was walking toward John, he saw him and he said, Behold, the Lamb of God who comes to take the sins of the world away. He baptized him. And even though he said to Jesus, I need to be baptized by you, Jesus said, No, this must happen so that the law and the prophets can be fulfilled. As John the Baptist, his cousin, baptized him, when he came up out of the water, the Holy Spirit descended down upon him as a dove. And a voice from heaven, God himself said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. And the Bible tells us that as the Lord's ministry began to take off, that John the Baptist's ministry began to slow down. And Jesus began to skyrocket. And so, of course, knowing that he was the Messiah, I would imagine in his humanness, as he was sitting there, realizing that he may be executed, he in his humanness asked a question that many of us ask when it seems like God is absent when we call on him. Sometimes we call on the Lord for self, for people we love, for a husband, a wife, a son, a daughter, a grandson, a granddaughter, maybe a neighbor, a co-worker. And sometimes, even though we are in relationship with him, we know him, and he knows us by name. For whatever reason, the Lord does not come and rescue us out of our situation and circumstance. That's a very difficult place to be, knowing that we serve a God that has all power in his hand, knowing that we may be in a situation that could take us out, and hoping and praying that God will come and deliver us out of the hand of the enemy. Well, I got some news this morning, my brothers and sisters, as we see with John the Baptist, the Lord did not deliver him out of the hand of King Herod. 
his head was removed from his body, he still saw death despite the relationship that he had with the Lord. And I want to mention that when he sent the question to Jesus, Jesus responded by saying, go and tell him what you see. Go and tell him that the poor are receiving the word. The word is being preached to them. Go and tell him that the sick are being made whole. Go and tell them that demons are being cast out. Go and tell him these wonderful works. He never said, go tell him I'm the Messiah. John's question was, are you the one or do we need to look for another? Because John, like so many other Jews, were expecting the Messiah to come and restore them to a place of greatness. They were looking for a king that would be like King David. The Jews were waiting for the day when they would be restored to the place of prominence. And so their anticipation and what their thought process was is that when the king would come and when the Messiah would come, he would not only lead them into proper worship, but he would overthrow the Roman government and he would restore them to a place of prominence on a world stage. But Jesus' ways are not like our ways. His thoughts are not like our thoughts. And so even John, his cousin, the great forerunner, had this thing twisted. He probably thought that he was going to be sitting right next to Jesus as he overthrew Herod the Tetrarch in the Roman government. He probably thought that he would be helping to make decisions for how the new Jerusalem would be. Perhaps he even thought that he may be someone that would be making laws to govern the people. Who knows? But what we do know is that his head was severed from his body in spite of who he knew and what he did. And you would think that with all the work that John was doing for the glory of God, surely he would be saved. There are a lot of people that love the Lord that God has called from labor to reward. There are a lot of people that are saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Spirit who still died from COVID-19. And so, my brothers and sisters, having a relationship with Jesus Christ, it will prevent you from eternal hellfire, but it won't prevent us from the vicissitudes of this life. In this life, we will have tribulation. The thief cometh not but for to steal, kill, and destroy. And he is still walking around this earth as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Remember what Jesus said to Peter? Peter, Satan desires to sip you as wheat. But listen, Peter, I have prayed for you. So when you are restored, go and restore your brothers. Peter did not realize that he was talking about the restoration that would come after he had forsaken him three times. Remember, Peter said, Lord, I don't know about these folk. I can't speak for these other 11 apostles, but I'm ready to die with you, Lord. I, I, I know all 12 of us are walking with you, but I really am your ride or die. When these 11 forsake you, I'm going to go with you all the way to the end. He thought that he was all that in a bag of chips. Sometimes we get spiritually arrogant and we think that we are more holier than we are. Sometimes we think because we've been walking with Jesus for a little while, we got this thing all sewn up. Sometimes we think because we've been next to the master, that we know just as much as the master. Well, I want to bust somebody's bubble who may be holding up the bloodstained banner for many years. No matter how saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost you may be, you still have not arrived. If you look at the life of Paul the Apostle, 
at the end of the day when he said he was a Hebrew of Hebrews, if anybody should brag, he had every right to brag. Baptized on the eighth day. He was circumcised on the eighth day. He was a Hebrew of Hebrews. He went to the university with Gamaliel. He spoke several languages. He was even a Roman citizen. But with all that he had, he said, I have not yet arrived. He said, everything that I've done and whatever I have accomplished, I count it all done for the sake of Jesus Christ. And, and he went on to say that I, I, I just want everybody to understand that I have not yet arrived. I'm going to forget all those things in the past. Yes, I'm a Hebrew of Hebrews. Yes, I was a Pharisee. Yes, I had letters to go bring back any from Damascus in chains that were calling on the name of Jesus. I'm a member. I'm in with the Sanhedrin Council. I'm all of that. But at the end of the day, all the stuff that I've accomplished in my past says nothing about the direction and where I'm going in my future. Somebody has done some great things in the past. You've been holding up the bloodstained banner of Jesus for a long time. And I don't know why it is when God gives us some things to do and we accomplish it, sometimes we get busy breaking our own arm, patting ourselves on the back. And we try and steal God's glory. But wherever you and I happen to be, God has much more work for us to do. So whatever you and I have done in the past, that's good, but it's not good enough. He has more work for you and I to do in the kingdom. So John had been walking with the Lord, talking with the Lord. He knew him for himself. And now he was in a situation and he had doubt. Sometimes even though you follow the Lord, you're going to be put in situations that cause you to doubt. Sometimes your faith is going to be tested, my brothers and sisters. And I don't care whether you're a priest, whether you're a pastor, whether you call yourself an apostle, whether you call yourself a bishop, whatever you call yourself, sometimes in this life, I don't care how much you pray, I don't care how much you read, I don't care how much you fast, sometimes your house is going to be attacked. Sometimes your body is going to be attacked. Sometimes your finance is going to be attacked. Sometimes the very child that you would lay your life down is going to completely break your heart. And even when you've done all that you've done and that you know to do, Still, they break your heart. So sometimes you and I just have to release them and give them to the Lord. When Jesus heard about his cousin, it saddened his heart. He deserted from the multitudes of people who were following him. He got in a boat and deserted to a place by himself. Sometimes, my brothers and sisters, you and I need to get alone by ourselves. Sometimes we need to isolate ourselves from everything and everybody. When you and I go into a situation that causes us grief, that causes us anxiety, that causes us fear sometimes, I know you may have a prayer partner, you have a pastor, you have a class leader, but before you call on anybody, call on the name of Jesus because it's at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. And even when you don't know the words to say, have you ever been in so much pain where the holler couldn't come out? Have you ever experienced pain? Sometimes it's not physical pain. I've had a lot of physical pain, but I tell you what has hurt me more than anything is the emotional pain. Have you ever had somebody that you love more than life itself to betray you in a way that cuts you to your core breaks your heart more than any enemy out on the street because your enemies don't really know you it's the one that you love the most that gets closest to you that sleeps in the bed next to you the one that you rock in your arms the one that you work double and triple shifts for to put food on the table clothes on their back to send them to school sometimes it's that very one that will break you down and cause you to cry and holler out to the Lord and I can't speak for anybody else 
but I've had times in my life when I tried to holler and no words could come. I've been cut so deep I didn't bleed, but it felt like I was bleeding. I've hurt so bad some days I, I, I cried all day until the tears stopped coming. In that very moment when I didn't have the words to say, thank God for the Holy Spirit who stepped in on my behalf and did what the Bible said. Make intercessions for not just me, but even for you. Sometimes in this life, oh, you and I are going to experience pain. We're going to experience betrayal. We're going to be sad sometimes. We got to steal away. Steal away to Jesus. Fall down on our knees. Talk to him. And he'll come to you. He'll sup with you. He'll lay hands on you. He'll be a balm and Gilead to your heart. He will be a heart fixer. He'll be a mind regulator. We need to take a pen or a page out of Jesus' book. When all hell is breaking loose, don't call the psychic hotline. Don't call Miss Cleo. Don't call the tarot card reader. Don't call somebody that's got the all-seeing eye in the window. Go to the Bible, see what God has to say. Open up your spiritual ear. Hear what the Spirit is saying to you. Thank you, Jesus. When he got by himself, the multitudes heard about it. And get this, they followed him on foot from all the surrounding cities. And when Jesus went out and saw it, he saw the great multitude. He was moved with compassion for them. A shepherd loves the sheep. And even though he just lost his cousin, he loved John the Baptist. Even though he lost the one that he loved, and he was grieving when he saw the people. In spite of his personal pain, in spite of what he was going through, in spite of his own heartbreak, he still had compassion for them. That's a lesson for every believer. You know, very often we get caught up in our own stuff. When we get the pink slip, when the job says we're not opening up again, it's a lot of people who are wondering what's going to happen next because the people that we elected, and I want everybody that has the ability to vote, remember how Congress is voting on the money that people need to pay their rent, to get food for these kids that are still at home, to pay their utility bills. Sometimes things don't work out the way that we intend them to. And for those that are in the clergy, our families get attacked. We personally get attacked. Our finances get attacked. Our mind is under constant attack. But in the midst of it all, when you've been called by God, I don't care how much pain you're in, you still have to go forth and say what thus saith the Lord. And what I found, my brothers and sisters, is when I'm really going through, I pray and ask the Lord to help me. But I still have to pray for the people that God has given me to shepherd. And as I begin to go on the intercessory prayer for the people of God, something begins to happen on my insides. My heart might be heavy when I start the prayer. But as I begin to call on the names of other people, call out the concerns of those who are going through, when I take the focus off my situation, and when I just let the Lord handle that, then all the stress, all the hurt, all the pain, all the uncertainty, because I put it in the Lord's hand and start praying for other people, 
whatever I'm going through, I realize that I still have a job to do. I still have to preach to the people. I still have to pray for the people. I still have to move the vision of God forward. And for those of us who have been saved, regardless of what your present situation is, in the midst of a COVID-19, you still have to pray. You still have to study. You still have to encourage yourself and somebody else. In spite of systematic racism rearing its ugly awful head again, we still, the body of Christ, have to believe and walk by faith and not by sight. We still have to believe that we're just pilgrims passing through. And thank God this is not our final resting place. With all the hell that we go through on this earth, there's got to be something better than this. With all of the pain that you and I go through on this place, it's got to be something better than this. And so when you're going through, sometimes don't focus on yourself. Pray for somebody else. Go on the intercession for somebody else. And since the Lord's heart was breaking and he had compassion, he went on doing ministry. He began healing their sick. Everybody that came before him, he healed them. Can you imagine if the Lord was performing the miraculous healing right now today in this church and every church that's open in his name? Imagine if you could just walk down the aisle and somebody touch you and heal you from cancer. Imagine if you could just walk down the aisle, they lay hands on you and HIV is gone. Imagine if you could just walk down the aisle, you get touched and bipolar, depression is gone. Imagine if you could just walk down the aisle and, 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 and schizophrenia is gone. Imagine if you could walk down the aisle and, and, and people that have uh, bulimia is gone. Imagine if you could just walk down the aisle and people that have hatred in their hearts could be delivered from that. Well, I decree and declare God can do exceedingly abundantly above and beyond anything that we ask or think. And unlike some of these shysters that tell you mail in $5 so you can get a prayer cloth, the ones that lie to you and say, come order my prayer water and pour it on yourself and you'll be healed. I got news for you. When Jesus was healing, he didn't charge anybody a dime. So if anybody is healing today and they're going to charge you for it, you know that they're alive. When Jesus was performing miracles, all he said is, you've been healed. When the blind men came to him and he put a little spit in his hand and put it in their eyes, they could see. When the lepers came to him and he said, go show yourself to the priest, by the time they got there, they were healed. When the woman with the issue of blood who was so embarrassed that she didn't want to touch him, when she just reached out and grabbed the hem of his garment and the blood dried up. He didn't charge her for that. When a funeral procession was happening and he just touched the casket in the boy job, he didn't charge for that. When Lazarus had been days for four days and he called his name, Lazarus, come out. He didn't charge Lazarus for that. Jesus didn't charge to heal anybody. So if you and I are going to get healed today, don't go to these people that promise healing if they steal your money. Go to somebody that you know has been born again and washed in the blood, who has the power from God from on high, who can touch you and you be here, but they're not going to charge you money. They're not going to proffer lie to you. They're going to tell you the truth. So even today, healing is going forth. He had compassion. He healed their sick. Because he was able. He wanted to show something, not just to the people. He wanted the apostles to realize that he was sovereign and sufficient. And he could handle whatever they were going through or whatever they would go through. And so his apostles did like a lot of my officers do. When it was evening. His disciples came to him saying, this is a deserted place and the hour's already late. Send them away 
that they can go into the village and buy themselves food. See, that sounds like a lot of people that work in the church. A lot of times when you want to do ministry, and ministry does cost money, some church folk don't even ask or say, we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. When they hear that you're going to try and feed somebody and it's going to cost, some folks say right away, we ain't got the money, Reverend, we can't do it. When you try to expand things in the community, anytime it costs money, and by the way, ministry does cost money. But I tell you, since I had this gift of faith when God gives it to me, I don't know how he's going to make it happen, but I always know it's going to happen. Walking by faith and not by sight is not just walking and believing in something that has not been proven. God proved himself to be real the moment that he woke Jesus up after that third day. I've been into the tomb, my brothers and sisters, and I can tell you myself the tomb is still empty. God proved himself to be true when he said, let there be, and there was light. When he said, let us make man, and they did. God has proved himself to be true from day one, and he's been trying to show humanity who he was and the love that he has. And so my brothers and sisters, he fed them, and here's what he told the brothers. The apostles said, we don't have enough food to feed them. Send them away. And Jesus said, no, they don't need to go away. You give them something to eat. When people come to the church, and they're going to be coming to the church even more, we have a responsibility not to send people away who come to the church in need. We, the body of Christ, have a responsible to supply their needs because if God said he shall supply all of our need according to his riches and glory, the body of Christ should be able and willing to go out and bless God's people. Whether they're in your church or not, we have a responsibility to go and help somebody. Go feed them. This miracle is the only miracle of Christ that is in all four Gospels. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John all record this miracle. In Matthew, after he said, you give them something to eat, they said to him, we have only five loaves and two fish. But if you look in John, it tells us, they said there's a lad here. And he's got five loaves, five barley loaves and two fish. I heard no preacher say he had some sardines and a few crackers that his mom packed in his lunch. Mothers know what to do. She was sending her boy out to go see this man Jesus. And a good mother, like so many good mothers have done and are still doing, packed their son a lunch. Can you imagine this young man and the way his life was changed, having the encounter that the Lord wants to take my lunch to perform a miracle, something that I have in my hand? God's going to take that, and it's going to become a miracle. And so the little lad gave him the two fish and the five loaves. And then he, Jesus, commanded the multitudes to sit down on the grass. And he took the five loaves and the two fish. He looked up to heaven and he blessed them. And he broke them. And gave the loaves to the disciples. And the disciples gave to the multitudes. This young man took what he had and gave it to the Lord. It did not seem like much, but when we take what we have and put it in the Lord's hand, a little becomes much when you put it in the master's hand. There's a story in the Old Testament about a prophet, Elijah, after he had gone to Ahab, said there's going to be a drought. The Lord not only affected Ahab and Jezebel, but even affected the prophet. 
because he also was dealing with the drought. So the Lord sent him to a brook, said, he fed him with a raven by day. The raven fed him bread and meat, and he drank from the brook. But the brook eventually dried up. So the Lord sent him to this widow woman who had a son, and she was down to her last cornmeal. He said, go to this woman. And she will feed you. And he said, woman, make me some of those cakes. And the woman said to the prophet, I only have enough for one last meal. I'm going to bake these cakes and my son and I, we're going to eat it and we're going to die. And this is what the prophet said. Before you do that, make some for me. And then some for you and your son. And then the woman did as the prophet obeyed. She obeyed the prophet. She took what she had in her hand, and she obeyed the word that the prophet gave her. And do you know that for the rest of the famine, that cornmeal never ran out. The oil never ran out. While everybody else was starving and wondering how were they going to survive, because she trusted the word of God that came through the prophet, she and her son did not go hungry. They had enough. My brothers and sisters, whatever we have, it may seem like a little bit. Two fish and five barley loaves is certainly not enough to feed 5,000 men. And by the way, if there were 5,000 men, you all know there were some sisters in that crowd. Matter of fact, the Bible tells us there were men, there were women and children. I went to the Million Man March in the Minister said men only, but I tell you, when I got to D.C., it was a whole lot of sisters out there because I know the sisters probably said, if there's going to be a million men here, I know I'm going to get a husband. And even though Minister Farrakhan said this is for brothers only, it was a bunch of sisters out there because they said, if it's a million men, one of these has got to be for me. I think when those sisters probably start hearing, they wanted to see Jesus. But when they start hearing, it's about 5,000 men out there, and there's a lot of them not married. They probably said, let me go see this Jesus, and maybe I'll get a husband. Two fish and five loaves was just a little bit. But when he put it in the master's hand, it was more than enough. I've seen some great things. I watched The Last Dance with Michael Jordan and the Chicago Bulls. And how they won their last championship. Ten different episodes. Man, it was amazing seeing how they did and how Jordan performed. When Michael Jordan had a ball in his hand, it was nothing like it. I thought I'd never see anything greater than Michael Jordan. And then an almost clone named Kobe Bryant came along. And I thought when, when the Black Mamba, I thought when the Mamba was on the court, I said, man, this is the best player. I, I love Jordan, but since I'm a Lakers fan, I'm a roll with Kobe. I never thought I'd see anybody do some of the things that I saw Kobe do. But then this man, LeBron James, came along. I said, boy, I thought Kobe was great, and what he did with the ball in his hand, I've never seen some of the things he'd done. But then I saw this man, LeBron James, come out of high school, and what he's doing, not just on the court, but off the court, I said, he's really great. When Tiger Woods was playing at the height of his career, what he could do with a golf club, nobody else was able to do. When Tiger had a club in his hand, even if they didn't like the man, he was destroying the golf courses. When Venus and Serena got that tennis racket in their hand, oh, it's something to behold. And even though they came from South Central and they didn't want them there, their father made sure that they were still going to play. So when they put that racket in their hand, oh, that was great. But I decree and declare, Jordan was great. Kobe was great. Tiger was great. Venus and Serena were great. But when I think of the goodness of the Lord and all that he's done for us, when we take what we have, and put it in the Lord's hand. The Lord has a way of blessing a little bit. He'll take the little bit that we have, and when God blesses it, 
and breaks it, it becomes more than enough. God can handle whatever it is that you and I are going through. And here's the good news, my brothers and sisters. It doesn't just apply to our physical need. Take your problems and put them in the Lord's hand and watch and see what he will do. Take that wayward child and put them in the Lord's hand and see what he will do. Take that husband or wife and put them in the Lord's hand. You can't do anything with them. You've done all that you can. Put it in the Lord's hand. Take that drug or alcohol addicted one that you hold on to so tight You've been trying to get them to go to AA meetings and NA meetings for years and they won't do it. Step back for a minute and put them in the Lord's hand. You've been trying to get your boo or your significant other saved by nagging them. Stop nagging them and fall down on your knees. Put them in the Lord's hand. I decree and declare when we take whatever it is that we have, take your problems and put them in the Lord's hand. Take your burden to Jesus and leave it there. Leave it there. Take your burdens to the Lord and leave it there. If you trust and never doubt, he will surely bring you out. Take whatever it is that's in your hand and in your heart and put it in the Lord's hands. And I decree and declare that he will do more than enough. God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above and beyond anything that we can ask or think. So if you need healing, God is able. If you need deliverance, God is able. If you need salvation in your house, God is able. If you need your heart fixed and your mind regulated, God is able. God can handle it. I know he can handle it. Too many dangers, toils, and snares. We have already come. I know 45 thinks that he can stop an election. But he can. He will handle it. I don't care what you're going through. We don't know when COVID-19 is going to be over. But the God that we serve sits high. He looks low. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. The sea and all that's within it. He's able to handle whatever you're going through. COVID-19 is not too big for him. Problems in your home is not too big for him. Pink slip on your job. It's not too big for him. Whatever you're going through, he can, he will, he shall handle it. Turn it over to Jesus. He'll make everything all right. I'm a living witness. I'm a living witness. I don't care what you're going through. When you've gotten to the end of your rope, and you want to throw in the towel, turn it over to Jesus. He can do what no other power can do. He can heal you. He can save you. He's a heart fixer. I know the Lord will make a way somehow. I know somehow. I know some way. He will handle it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Bless his name. He's worthy of the praise. He's worthy of the honor. Give God glory. Shout hallelujah. Open your mouth. Bless his name. There's no other name. By men, women, boys, and girls can be saved. It's at the name of Jesus. Buddha can't do it. 
Mohammed can't do it. Confucius can't do it. But at the name of Jesus, he is the bread. He is the life. He is the door. Come unto me, all ye that have a labor. I'll give you rest. Rest from your labor. Rest from your weary. Rest from your stress. You're too blessed to be stressed. Turn it over to Jesus. Release that son. Release that daughter. Release that job. Release that problem. Turn it over. He'll make everything all right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Bless his name. Woo. Bless his name. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody love me like the Lord. Nobody. Nobody. Can't nobody love you like Jesus. Can't nobody love you like the Lord. Bless his name. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Oh, how I love Jesus. I love him. Hallelujah. brothers and sisters, you know what you're going to find out? They took up 12 baskets. Everybody had eaten 5,000 men, probably close to 20,000 people because they were women and children. And do you know from five barley loaves and two small fish, after they put it in the Lord's hand, he blessed it, he broke it. Everybody was fed. There's plenty. God has more than enough in his kingdom. And he was showing not just the disciples, but he was showing them because they needed to know he was greater than Moses. They got manna from Moses in the wilderness, but he was showing them, I am greater than Moses. They, they loved Elijah because he gave bread to a hundred people. He said, I'm greater than Elijah. The manna from heaven I made that happen. And I'm going to show you that I'm sovereign and sufficient. I'm going to supply not just enough, but more than enough. My brothers and sisters, I want to offer you something today that's more than enough. And that's salvation. Yes. It can come only through Jesus. Yes. I know sometimes people get angry because I say there's only one way in which men, women, boys, and girls can be saved. And that's through the Lord Jesus Christ. Some people don't believe that, but my Bible says, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the light. No man comes to the Father except through me. That's what Jesus said. So we want to give someone an opportunity to come into a right relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ today. If you want to be saved, I know it sounds too good to be true. But the Bible says that if you confess with your mouth, that's the first part. You have to say it. But it's a two-part. You have to believe it here. If you repeat the prayer that I'm going to pray with you, you repeat the words, but you don't really believe it in your heart, you will not be saved. The Bible says if you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, in Romans 9, 10, 9, that Jesus Christ died and rose again, you shall be saved. So my brothers and sisters, I'm going to lead us in the sinner's prayer. If you want to be saved today, you can say it in an audible voice or silently. The real deal is about the heart. The Lord will hear, who sees all, knows all, hears all, will save you today. If you want to be saved, repeat after me. Dear Lord, forgive me of my sins. 
cleanse me of my iniquity. I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died and rose again. I believe that you're seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. Come into my life. Be the Lord of my life. I surrender my will to you. And my brothers and sisters, if you have prayed that prayer, you are assured a seat in eternity. If the Lord took you right now, if you breathe your last breath, you are assured to see it in eternity. Don't let anybody fool you and say, well, you just got saved. You couldn't know you're saved. Now, the second opportunity we want to give is for salvation. Someone may be saved, but you need a church home. You, you've been church hopping. And especially now with all these internet services, you own everybody's service, but you don't have membership anywhere. So we want to give you an opportunity to unite with this great church, Bethel African Methodist Episcopal Church of San Diego. If you want to join this great church, call 619-232-0510, 619-232-0510. Leave your name, number, and an email address. One of the clergy will contact you to welcome you in. Second way that you can join is by going to our website. You go to the website and type your information in and you will be contacted by one of our clergy persons to welcome you in. And my brothers and sisters, today is the first Sunday. We celebrate the sacrament of Holy Communion on first Sundays in the African Methodist Episcopal Church. So for those of you who have already gotten one of the communion cups, Looks like this. Many of you have already stopped by the church and gotten one of the communion cups. So we're going to join in in the sacrament of Holy Communion. I'm going to ask if you all would play... Um, is a song, it reaches to the highest mount, the blood that Jesus shed. Yeah, yeah. Shed for me. Way back on Calvary. Way back on Calvary. Blood. Play softly. Let's play softly, please. Let us receive our sacrament of Holy Communion. If you have the disposable cup, please take plastic off the lid. The broken body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, broken for you and for me. Take, eat. Thank you, Lord. And now remove the top off of the juice. The precious blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, shed on the cross at Calvary for the remission of our sins. Drink ye all of it. Thank you, Lord. And my brothers and sisters, for those of you who may not have gotten the disposable cup, we will have the communion with empty hands that you will see on the screen so you can still partake of the sacrament even without the wine and the juice. When it reaches, let's go on up a little higher. Oh, it reaches to the highest oh, And it flows Thank you. 
gives me strength. That gives me strength. From day. From day. To day. To day. It will never. desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy son Jesus Christ and through faith in his blood we and thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion and here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and lively sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that all we who are partakers of this communion may be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. And although we be unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, Yet we beseech thee to accept this, our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Brothers and sisters, I want to ask uh, for continued prayers for Tatiana Hughes and family. Um, she lost her grandmother and her aunt uh, two months apart. She continues to need our prayers. I'm going to ask if you um, would continue to pray for all of those on our sick and shut-in list, but I, I want and I'm asking special prayer for uh, Martha Bailey. Please continue to pray for uh, Brother Carl Hunter. Continue to lift up Brother Victor Pippins. Judith Gillum Roll is at home. She continues to need our prayers. Uh, please also pray uh, for uh, Brother Malik Bacon and Fr Freddie Bevlin. God bless you and God keep you. Have a wonderful week. God. He can handle it. He can handle it. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures here below. Praise him, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And now may the grace of God and the sweet communion of his Holy, Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide in each and every one of our hearts. May the people of God say amen. 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 Remember, it's your task to wear your mask. Stay safe. Practice safe distancing. God bless you and God keep you. Happy birthday to you.